Because she's basically identical to what I'm getting here. I uh, said so the vehicle is the vehicle is not is off. Key on. I'm getting command here. So I'm gonna check the brake switch to see if I'm getting command also like this. Alright, so something is seeping voltage into this side of the switch when it's not supposed to, right? So I'm getting 1.24 volts, right? So what I'm gonna do next is I gotta figure out if it's coming from the ETAC side or it's coming from the, the brake side, right? So what I'm gonna do is back probe, um, remove, see if I can disengage or isolate these wires right here, these pink wires, right? Um, to see what side of the what which which pink wire is feeding voltage is it coming from the etox or if it coming from the harness or is it coming from the brake side hey so what was happening here this fuse was good right the switch was good the input to the switch was good but along right here is where it's hard to get tricky what i did first was develop i had to develop a game plan how to attack this vehicle right so i got myself the service manual right um I hooked up my voltmeter to the hooked up my voltmeter to the brake switch, right? And when with that now I was able to attack, right? Um so with what they say here is basically you gotta find these connectors which is C um three oh four and C one twelve, right? And you gotta do some checks there. Right, so the customer replaced the brake switch, so we know it's not the brake switch, right? Um, I what I did next, I broke, I isolated the the switch here, right? Let me just move this here by cutting this wire, right? So this side, of, this leg of the wire goes to the brake switch, the brake lights in the back, right? So according to the wiring diagram, that's this side, right? Which is the two, the pink, right? So it comes down and goes to the the back side of the um, the vehicle, right? So when I did that, I measured. I still was getting voltage coming into let's see, into this leg of the wire here, right? Remember, it's two pink wires, right? This black wire with the red stripe is hot coming off from the fuse so we know that's good so by isolating the pink wire what I did I isolate the um, the brake light from sending voltage sometimes I run into cars where the circuit um, was sending back the brake light was sending back on um, voltage right to the transmission but that's that's not in this case right so what leave me now is what I'm left now with is this leg of the wire here going from the switch going to the etax, right? And the etax now is connected to the gear shift solenoid, right? So I'm I gotta find this connection here, which is the C12, right? And according to my layout, C12 is on the fuse, the fuse box, right? Which is under the glove compartment right there so what I'm gonna do is unplug the I'm gonna unplug the the jacks behind here and I'm gonna check it out and do my test right real quick right I'm gonna monitor my fire my scan tool you see that the brake switch is still on when the key is on right so what I'm gonna do is unplug I want to take out some plugs behind here. I'm gonna unplug these these jacks, and then I'm gonna see if the brake if the brake light comes back on, come off, right? So right now it's on. So they say in the C12 connector is how to be in the back of this this part of the wire or somewhere down here. So I gotta unplug. What I've done is remove all the, the jacks. 
from in the back here, right? And I'm doing some inspection of of us, of the jacks. I'm just gonna clean it up. Right, I'm gonna just spray some um some contact cleaner on it. I'm just gonna check it out real quick and see you know if that make a difference. Right, corrosion tends to go or moisture tends to go in some some crazy spots. Alright, so I got everything back together. Right, and as you can see, my brake switch is off. Right? My key is on. My brake switch is off now. So what I as I said, this is the C three twelve. It had a little bit of stuff on it but not for much. I cleaned it out and I forgot it. I was so excited. Um I said I was monitoring my scan tool and the multimeter and when I put everything back together I see it's off. Um should I call it luck? Yeah. Um <laughs> It's crazy man this one took me for a ride so basically what do I sum this up to um is a fault is, is corrosion causing high um high resistance in the harness and have the brake switch on and now the brake switch is off all right so let's take this for a test run um I'm not hearing the solenoid One eternity later. Let's see what's going on with these lights. Alright, so this bulb here and this one look like incandescent bulbs. Right, but let's take it apart and see if we see anything fishy behind these um these lights. Right? Because a uh, little simple thing that you overlook. You know, uh, when the guys on the Facebook group mentioned to me that, you know, um check the lights, check the BCM, stuff like that. Kinda a little over um site that I missed out right basically this is aftermarket market lights right this is the indicator right around here is a stop light and what it did this is a reverse light here so if you're looking at this from outside you think it's a normal setup right this is the um the hood or the trunk light but look on this side you don't have anything it's missing a bulb right so what caught me was basically I didn't um, take the light apart. What I did was unplug it, but I I really didn't understand what the circuit was, um, what the E-TAC was looking for, right? And basically the E-TAC was using the ground um, through the bulb, was grounding it through the bulb, right? So I was getting that two volt. And I mean, I, I was able to narrow it down because I used my test light to ground it and basically the brake switch came off. But so with the help of the guys, I was able to understand a little bit more, right? And seeing that the E-Tax is using the brake light, let's read for codes, nothing. The brake light, I mean, the E-Tax was using the brake light to, as a ground for the, the switch. I'm going to sum this up as a faulty aftermarket unit. I'm not sure if the customer want to replace. They said the vehicle came just like this from from um, Japan. So most likely I got to see if I can replace this unit. Right? Um, if, they, if they sell it here. If not, they will have to replace the light and go original. Right? Um, but as I said, this was a good find. <laughs> I, I learned a lot there. Um, I was actually... Uh, what I did first was I isolated the brake switch 
and then I was able to you know uh, track it down to be a harness issue but but basically it was technically where the etox which is a BCM also called BCM was looking for a ground you know and as I said man um, them guys in the Facebook group I ain't gonna lie man for those thanks man you know uh, we learn from each other this, this was a learning experience a second learning experience for me with this one um, don't run into too many of these break light problems but I learned a lot from this one you know um, you know be quick to blame the ECU and the PCM and the brake and the ABS and you know and a simple thing as a light bulb you know all the logic is, is written up yeah I thought it was a canvas issue um, I also thought it was a harness issue I know it wasn't like no power or nothing like that but a simple thing as a uh, you know aftermarket crappy aftermarket um, unit right basically was causing all the problems right and if I unplug it as I said the brake switch comes right back on so as I said the e-tax is using the BCM as basically its ground right so I hope you learned something I learned something right as I said thanks to the guys on the Facebook group right um, yeah, appreciate all the support you know until next time take it easy don't forget to like subscribe share comment don't be quick to throw parts I did not throw any parts on this car I just um you know was able to use a uh, one of my guys um had he had the same model vehicle and I just used his light to test what's going on and yeah it's solved Hey, so until next time, take it easy. So bonus uh, video, let's pop this open. So what we're looking at here is a 50 watt, 10 ohms, right? Um, this is a resistor, right? And you see how it's heavily corroded on both sides. Right, so I wonder if if I just pop on the resistor, if I just get a resistor and put it back, if it'll work. You never know; it might work. But basically, this this resistor needs to be replaced, and probably won't have to replace the whole unit and just bring these in. This um, vehicle came with some aftermarket lights, right? Uh, one you got to tie in right here. Right, and basically, this is what contributes to that that issue, right? So, if you look in the back here, this is where it was hooked up, right? And they had this resistor in this casing, right? It was in this casing like this, right? And like water got into it. You see the corrosion. So what I did, I hooked up a little resistor here. We see using a bulb, right, to trigger the switch. Yeah, I tried to use a smaller bulb, but it didn't work because it wasn't enough load for the e-tax to um, pull the brake switch down the ground, right? So basically, also what the e-tax is using is the bulb as its ground. So I'm just doing that. I, I'm not keeping it like that. I'm just doing that, doing this just to um, test run, right? And this client has a um, alternative gas in the back here, so I gotta make sure I secure it. Not like the what happened to the last bulb, right? So I just put a little covering on it, right? So it won't come in contact with anything or melt, right? And this should be enough for me to um, basically test the vehicle. 